quick. Okay, so we were talking about uh, Flexbox, and uh, we looked at, we were looking at the container, and um, <clears throat> we got to uh, justify content and align items. Did we get through align items? I don't think we did. <coughs> did we get through that? So uh, we got, when we put display flex on a container, so here's the container, and we say display flex, it makes it a container, and then we could set properties on that container. So we could take any element, put display flex on it, it became a flex container, any of the elements which are immediate direct children, and turn your monitor sideways please, I'm going to force you to watch this and listen because I didn't get enough attention when I was a kid, and you're going to pay for it now. <laughs> to make up for it. It's a vast gaping hole in my psyche. Psychological services. That's right, dude. I've used them. <laughs> Wondering why my dad didn't love me when I was a kid. <clears throat> Just because your monitor sideways doesn't mean I still want you working at it. The point of turning sideways is not to get you to do this. <laughs> All right, you ready? So uh, we put display flex on any element, and that becomes a flex container. And then all the immediate direct children, right, nested one level down, <laughs> or just, you know, one level down, not nested. Those become flex items. And then we could set flex, uh, we could set properties on that flex container. So we could set flex direction, and we could set flex wrap. So direction is row and column, right, or row reverse, column reverse. And wrap is to wrap or not to wrap. Should be some joke in there. I'm not going to make it. And uh, flex flow is a shorthand for direction and wrap. Flex direction and flex wrap. So we could set those. And then we have justify content. So justify content impacts the main axes. So if we are flex row, our main axis is horizontal. And we can move things along the main axes, the horizontal axes, with justify content. <laughs> if we are... If we are flex direction column, <coughs> then flex direction column, the main axis is vertical, and justify content moves things along the main axis, which is now vertical. So that image right there, you'd kind of have to turn it sideways. I don't know how to do that with my browser window, right? But it'd be moving things vertically. Just turn your head and look at it like this. Turn your head to the left, and that's how you'd see it. Like the main axis just became vertical, okay? So then we have uh, align items. Align items impacts the cross axes. And so if we have a row, the cross axes, the main axis is horizontal, the cross axis is vertical. So if we want to move things along the cross axes, it'll be just like those images, we use align items. Align items, and, uh, and if we have flex direction column, the main axis is a column, the cross axes is the horizontal, the main axis is vertical, the cross axis is horizontal. And so align items on something where flex direction is a column is going to move things along the horizontal axis because that's the cross axis, right? And so align items and align content are both going to impact the cross axis. I should highlight cross axis here. And by the way, Super Simple Highlighter is like one of my favorite plugins ever because I'm old school and I grew up reading books with a highlighter. So now I can highlight web pages and come back and be like, oh, what well, was important? And so that's a plugin for Chrome. You could just Google Chrome plugin, Super Simple Highlighter, add it to Chrome, and you can start highlighting web pages. It's pretty cool. You go back and see what was important. And it makes things, uh, when visual, the learning styles, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, it gets the kinesthetic involved. You're actually moving. Highlighting content helps you learn. So line content shifts the entire block of content. So you can see the block of content went to the top of the cross axes, right? So here, the main axis is assumed in these images to be a row, flex direction row. Main axis is horizontal. Cross axis is vertical. So flex start puts it up at the top of the vertical. Flex in puts it at the bottom. Center puts it in the center. Stretch kind of stretches the boxes all along the cross axes, which in this case is the vertical axes. And then space between, space around, you can see what that does. But it's affecting the lines, all of the lines. So line content affected, or line items affected 
items in a line, right, each line, this affects all of the lines. So, so let's look at that in action. So we looked at a justify content, impacts the main axes. Align items flex start. Align items flex in. Align items center. Align items stretch. Align items baseline. We did see these, so this is a little bit of a review. And the CS CSS on this is uh, display flex, flex direction row. Is that, if I did this, am I going to have the same page? Yes, why? The default is row on flex direction. If I did this, will I have the same page? No, the default is no wrap, right? So maybe it'd still look the same because I didn't have any wrapping going on, but it would not be the same page because when wrapping did come into effect, this would be no wrap without it, and that makes it wrap. <laughs> so then we have flex align items flex start. So align items in this situation, the horizontal is the main axes because we're flex direction row. The vertical is the cross axes. Align items is aligning them on the cross axes. We're saying align items flex start. Okay, align items flex start. So that's the CSS. That's all of the flex box that's in there. So there's align items flex start. Align items flex end. Align items center. And I also justify content center just to put things in the middle. We did that exercise. And then here's a uh, line items uh, stretch. And align items baseline. And we looked at that other CSS last week that I had to throw in there to sort of, you know, get those to do what I wanted them to do. So we saw those. So let's compare align items with align content because. Certainly that's a point of confusion, like, okay, well, what's the difference between align items and align content? So we just saw align items, and we saw it where the main axis is a row. Let's look at align content and, uh, and see align content where the main axis is a row. So if we look at our CSS, I'm just making sure that I'm at align content. Align content, if we look at our CSS, <coughs> We have display flex for the container, flex direction row, flex wrap wrap, align content flex start. And I even have align items flex start right here. So we could comment it in and out and see what happens. So it will open up all of these. And the only difference in the CSS, main difference, the main difference in the CSS on these files is going to be that uh, we're going from <laughs> flex start to flex in to center to stretch, to space between, space around. So let's see. Align items flex start. What would have happened if I just had, uh, sorry, that's align content flex start. What would happen if I had align items flex start? Yeah. So just nuances, just learning the tools. Right, you're kind of learning like different bits on a router or something. Oh wow, who knew that router carves that bit? Right, this router carves that. That's a line items flex start. Here's a line I a content flex start. Okay, cool. Let's look at the CSS for the next one. A line items flex in. A line content flex in. Do, 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 do. So that's align content, align items, do, 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 align content, do, 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 do. Uh, here's align items, align content center. So align content center, align content center. Align item center. Do you see how align content kind of like treat all that, all those rows together as a chunk? I kind of like that better. Like, where is all that space coming from between those things? 
Height of the container 700, border, display flex, flex direction, row, flex wrap, wrap, align item center. Width, height, that's set in these. Margin is 16 pixels all around. M stands for what? What's an M stand for? It's like the browser's default pixel size, right? Uh, CSS M defined. I'm not, M definition phrase, the spec gives us a very simple definition for an M unit equal to the computed value of the font size property, the element on which it is used. In other words, you have the following CSS. But uh, <laughs> I wonder why it's called M. M D N M. Oh, that just brought up emphasis. Font size. Does it? It's the default font size of the browser. Another way of saying the font size is with M values. The size of an M is dynamic. When defining the font size property, M is equal to the size of the font that applies to the parent element in question. You're right, there's more to it. If you haven't set the font size anywhere on the page, then it's the browser's default, which is probably 16 pixels. So by default, 1M equals 16, 2M equals 32. But the important part here, equal to the size of the font that applies to the parent of the element. So if you change the font somewhere, then it's looking to the parent of the element to get its size. So that could get totally screwball. I was just looking to see what, where M came from if it had some name. <coughs> so we have margin 1M. I could just call this 16 pixels. Border, because in my browser, if I look at settings and uh, default font size, somewhere in here, I'd see 16 pixels. The mouse is all jumpy. <laughs> Background color, dark gray, text align center. So I'm not sure why we got all that space, right? Like if we put a border. So that's just around the item, right? If we put a border around the container. Oh, I've, I already have a border there. And I already have a border there. So I've got borders. So you can see where the borders are. Anyhow. That's a uh, center. So you, kind of the, the takeaway you should be getting here is a line content is sort of like the whole block of line, all the lines. And so here's uh, stretching it. Interesting, a line content. And if that had been a line items, same deal. Interesting. And then we have 34, which is a space between, a line content space between. Space between, what if that had been a line items? No space between. What do we have for line items? Flex start, flex in, baseline center, inherit stretch. So we don't have a space between for Align items, but for align content we do, and that's what it looks like. What if we'd had even more divs? I think I need to restart my computer. Space between. That's cool. And uh, finally, we have a uh, space around. So that's going to be kind of like with uh, justify content, we had space between and space around. So the main takeaway from container settings with Flexbox is that you have display flex, which makes a container a Flexbox container. And then all of the item, all of the immediate next elements directly under it become flex items. And you can set properties on the container which impact the items and affect how the items are displayed. The main properties that you set, I'm just going to go through them. Flex direction sets the direction 
row or column or row reverse or column reverse and that sets the primary axes. So row, the primary axis is horizontal and the cross axis is vertical. Column, flex direction column, primary axis is vertical, cross axis is horizontal, right? And then we have flex wrap, so it could be wrap or no wrap. Wrap seems to be, you know, pretty popular choice. Let's wrap it into the next line so things flow. <coughs> and, uh, and then we have uh, flex flow, which is shorthand for flex direction and flex wrap in that order because D comes before W. Right, so here's a uh, flex flow. And then we have justify content, which moves things along the main axes. And then we have align items, which moves things along the cross axes. And we have align content, which move, moves things along the cross axes. The difference between items and content is items, uh, right, impacts each line, so each element. And then align content impacts all of the lines together, all of the elements together. So this kind of basically put a little bit more space between the lines. This one kind of grouped the lines tighter. Okay. And there's a few properties with align content, like space between, space around. Like we don't have space between, space around for line items. We do have space between, space around for justify content. <coughs> so align items impact the individual items, align content, impact all the content, all of, all of the items. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's the main thing for container settings. And uh, we skipped over doing the columns on those guys. So I'm going to leave these files here where you look at setting align items on a column. And I'm going to leave these files here where you look at setting align content on a column. I'm going to leave that up to you. <coughs> Do you guys want a coding challenge exercise? Sure. Yeah? So we did the, the center thing. So I want you to uh, put a whole bunch of divs on a page. And uh, I'm just bring one up. I want you to make it look like that. So there are 17 divs. Make them look like that, as close as possible. OK? 17 divs, make them look like that. That's a pretty good challenge. Because you're just looking at, OK, that's the end result I want. Somebody gave you a mock-up. Now you got to think about, OK, how do I use the tools I just learned to get it to do that? I'm going to check to make sure that there isn't any item settings in, in this. I think there might be one because I haven't taught you that yet. And you need flex grow one on your item. Okay, For each of the individual flex items, you need to have flex grow one. And that's, that's, those are the settings for the items. So I'm just going to give you that. Okay, So that width, the height, the margin, the border, background color, text align, center, and flex grow. And then apply that to 17 divs, give those 17 divs class item, and then have one div, which is the container, and use the container settings you just learned to get them to look like this, right? So let me get these two things side by side somehow. What the heck? So there it is. There's your challenge. 